thinking. All right, it's recording. Excellent. So anyway, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for doing this. It's my pleasure. Uh, I was a little bit afraid to ask because I'm, I'm like, you know, what? I'm just going to start asking people to do this. And <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, you got to do it. I, I'm working on a book and I have interviews I'm doing for that. And nice. It's amazing. I mean, there's it, it's interesting responses that I think you get sometimes. But for the most part, people are open to talking to you. Yeah, yeah. I've reached out to a bunch of people and I was just like, well, if they say no, they're going to say I mean, they're not going to say anything if I don't ask them. So yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. So I, I read online that you did the first live tweet up in space. Yeah, it's interesting that sometimes sometimes that gets represented. And I, it might be the first live. It might have been like the first live tweet as part of a this tweet up thing that we did. You know, NASA has yeah. these social events where they bring people that do social media together and then allow them to communicate and learn things. And uh, yeah, Jeff Williams and I were on the space station and uh, we participated in that. And we were using Twitter on board the space station, but at that time it was still, uh, you know, you had to, there wasn't live interweb, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we, so we would put something together, send it down. Our people would post it for us. It was totally transparent that that was going on. And then somewhere down the line, you know, the first live tweet happened. I think the first tweet ever was from Mike Massimino, though, on a space shuttle. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Um, so you painted while in space. Yeah. Um, so you did you like uh, I know you can't bring a ton of stuff up there, but I mean, how big were the paints or the brushes or like, you know, the brush, I had one brush. And actually, I think the story about the brush is more interesting even than painting in space really, because the brush was uh, uh, one of my friends who was also an engineer, uh, like forever, like worth the Apollo. He was the guy who suited up the Apollo guys, like that walked on the moon to, you know, oh, wow. to go to space, you know, in that kind of iconic suit room and stuff. But he is also one of the most talented artists that I've ever met. His name is Ron Woods. And you, you, you might have met him. I, I don't know. He's worked at Kennedy Space Center for quite a long time and yeah. out at some of the events. But <clears throat> you should. You should. And you should speak to him. He, I, yeah, that'd be awesome. I missed the introduction. He's fantastic. And uh, so I took his brush with me. And, uh, and I brought up just one of those little... I have a, I have one of them somewhere, but just like the little fold up, like travel watercolor kits, you know, that you can have yep. and just a little pad of paper. And if you'll hang on, hang on one sec. Yeah. <clears throat> like, so this is just a print of what I painted. It's kind of hard to see. I, I can't figure yeah, out no, the direction to go, you know, and that's the, that's the size. So like seven by seven by nine or something like six by nine. I can't remember, but uh, watercolor. And yeah, and of course you have to get it screened. Like everything you take up there, the materials have to be okay. They can't off yep. gas or do anything like that. So um, yeah, just this little kit and paint. That's it. cool. Yeah, because <laughs> I've read the story about how they came up with the ballpoint pen because they needed to be able to write in space and you know, and, and so everything you bring up there again, you know, like you said, has to be kind of screened and, yeah. you know, yeah, that's really cool. So what inspired you to do that? Was it just like, well, I'll tell you, I'm really thankful that uh, I had, you know, one of my support people on the ground who was the person, Mary Jane Anderson, who helped us get all of our stuff together. Like the, you know, she helped with all the official like clothing and things you would be able to take, but she was also the one that, you know, we had this little like travel bag kind of thing that you could bring up some personal items, right? And so yeah. most people bring up pictures of their family and friends, and then you could take pictures of the pictures, you know, in space for them and, uh, and you know, a t-shirt from your high school or something and, you know, things that have meaning to you. And I brought up my son's little stuffed animal. He was seven when I flew the first time. So one of these little like black and white dogs, it was so cute and had nice. that with me. But uh, Mary Jane reminded me that he's like, she's like, hey, you know, Nicole, you're going to be living there, you know, for months. You're not just working. There will be free time. You know, think about what you enjoy doing down here on Earth that you might be able to take with you to space and experience. And it hadn't even crossed my mind to do something like that. I, I mean, I really am so thankful 
helpful to her for this. That's really cool. And then she said, bring it to me. If it's okay, we'll pack it up and um, and you can take it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did because that that um, I never really thought of it. And you know, if if when I go on a road trip, I'm like, all right, let me just pack the necessities, right? Yeah. I'm not like, oh, let, let me bring this extra stuff. You know what I mean? Like that comes yeah. after and going to space. I could imagine it would be like, all right, uh, like it wouldn't even like no, it, it even didn't. Register. It absolutely yeah. didn't. And I knew, you know, like I knew that um, you know there's a guitar on the space station and a keyboard and. Um, you know, so music has been going on in space for a long time. Um, you know, the first person to to do I, like I would call like drawing, painting in space, uh, Alexei Leonov, one of the very first cosmonauts, who's also an artist. He brought up, you know, very deliberately brought up these this pack of colored pencils and little pad of sketch paper and did these sketches of orbital sunrises, you know, during some of those first flights. And then later he was part of the crew that remember the Apollo Soyuz mission where the U S and the Soviet union came together in space. Yeah. And, um, and he sketched, he did spent pencil sketches of all of the crewmates on um, the Apollo Soyuz mission. Wow. So Tom Stafford, one of the U S astronauts who he and Alexei ended up being best friends for the rest of their lives. You know, Tom has that original, you know, portrait that Alexei did of him in space. And then since then, it's just been, I, I kind of think of it like it's like the human and human space flight, right? We tend to forget about that. We don't do a lot of really great publicity of the the human side of yeah. like human space flight, you know, and things like painting and creating. And, you know, if you, every astronaut, even if you weren't a photographer before you go to space, you become one, you know, because you're looking at this stunning view out the window and all the work and stuff that's going on around you. And, you know, we all know it's like, wow, if I don't, and I know I can do the blinking thing and capture it in my yeah. own brain. Right. But if I don't photo document this in some way, I won't be able to share it appropriately. I won't be able to relive the memories when I'm yeah. older than I am now and, you know, stuff like that. So wow. there, there's been creativity up there forever. Yeah, that's all, cool. that's really cool because they yeah. they and, and I know when I take pictures of something that I see in person, it doesn't do it justice. Right. Yeah. But yeah. you have to like I mean, even the photos that I've seen, it's been like, whoa, this is this is really cool. But imagine what it would be in with depth yeah. and just kind of like the sounds and everything just, you know. Yeah. That's really, really cool. I've yeah, I've never connected the two. Even like growing up, I've never connected the two of, of science and art together. They're never really sold together. So <clears throat> when I saw your work, I was like, wow, that it just kind of like duh. Like it was like one of those dub mom moments where it was like, this makes sense why they would do this stuff. Yeah. You know, um, in space. But wow. So uh how has art and being a creative impacted your career as an engineer and an astronaut? Well, I think, you know, and this is, this kind of gets to my, I mean, I, I get the sense you feel this way too. I mean, there's, there's a real advantage to using your whole brain, right? You know, let's not just parse it off and say that you only have access to, the, you know, to this side of it. Right. And so I think even perhaps without knowing it really, not really like consciously saying, oh, okay, well now I'm gonna use this artistic side of my brain to answer or solve this engineering problem. Uh, I think it just happens, you know, it becomes this, you know, like tool in your toolbox really to pull into solving problems. Yeah. And that's why like with kids in school now, I, um, you know, I mean, I'm all for this STEM stuff, right? I really think it's important, but not at the expense of art and humanities and the social studies and you know those kinds of things that really i think give us a sense of who we are and how we fit and you know the life around us and you know history <laughs> it's kind yeah. of an important thing you know and i mean i want my son using his whole brain to solve problems yep. to i mean there's some pretty significant challenges out there and yeah um, yeah I think subconsciously I want to, I want to spell it steam with like yeah. an ad art right in the middle of it. Like here you yeah, go. We like, do, you know? do it, do it. I mean, I, and anytime I get pulled into one of these STEM things, which I'm totally happy and, and anxious and excited about supporting, I like throw the A in because it just yeah. has to be there. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of that scene in uh, uh, Apollo 13 where, 
you know, they, the guy comes down and whether this happened or not, but the guy comes down and he goes, he's like, they need an air filter. Yeah. And he's, they're like, okay. And, he, and then he throws a bunch of junk on the table and he goes, this is what you got. Yep. Right. Like that to me, every time I talk about creativity, I'm like, creativity isn't just this, uh, like everyone's like, oh, be, you be creative. You're the creative. Yeah. And it's like, well, what's the rules? Well, there is no rules in creativity. It's like, no, there is. And, and yeah. creativity thrives when you have boundaries and a final goal. Right. So their boundaries were here are the tools you have. Here's the materials. And here's where you need to get. We need yeah. to save these astronauts. So it's kind of like with your you had one paintbrush, a little canvas, these paints. Yeah. That's creativity. How what do, what can I create from these? And I feel like in engineering and, and science, that helps because it's this is what you have. Yeah. So that kind of critical thinking to me is, is I wish they would have pushed that more when I was a kid. Um, Cause it was either you were in art or you were math or science. And they're still and trying to do that Tim. I don't know if you're seeing that with your kids or not, but I mean, they're still trying to do that to, to them. And I'm like, dude, yeah. let, him, let him use it. Let him use the whole thing. And I think the words you use that the words critical thinking, I think that's it. It's like, you know, when I sit down to paint something or when I'm working with these kids on, you know, these spacesuits or, you know, these projects, it's like, there are, it, it, while you want to let, let, you know, the, the creativity kind of thing flow and, you know, what comes down might be completely unexpected as to what you, you know, went in thinking you were going to do. Um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta set a theme or like in space, it's like, you can't paint with watercolors the same way you do down here. The environment drives you to do something different. Right. And wow. um, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's, uh, to me, art honestly is, first of all, it's, you know, it's a way to communicate with everyone, even if they don't yeah. like your artwork. Like, I don't, I mean, really doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, I would like it if people like my artwork, right? But the more important thing to me is, can I engage them in a conversation, you know, that then leads them to perhaps know that, hey, we have this international space station that's doing all these things that are about improving life on earth or, Hey, we, you know, I had this view of Earth out the window that now makes me know, oh my gosh, I live on a planet and I'm an Earthling and, you know, only border that matters, that thin blue line. And those are the kinds of things I want to share through it. And scientists have been doing that forever, right? You know, you think yeah. about Hubble Space Telescope, gorgeous imagery. I mean, as a photographer, my gosh, it's like stunning, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not just a pretty picture, right? You know, the scientists are deliberately false coloring those images in some way to represent ultraviolet light or the yep. gaseous composition of it or whatever, because their brains process that imagery better than the ones and zeros too. So, you know, why not use it? <laughs> and, I, and I feel like, like thinking about it, I feel like art is almost the foundation of all space flight. If, if you think about the imagination it must have taken to say, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to yeah. do this, right? Just imagining that uh, that space station, the science lab floating around the earth, yeah. um, you, you know, super fast, but th that's the foundation. So it's almost like art and creativity was the, the why we're going to do it. And then science came in on here's how we're going to do it. Right. And with yeah. science, I think it's, it's, you tend to think science is very, like the foundation of it, you don't think of creativity when it comes to science. You think it's this mathematical, this, this, and this. So I think with kids, they tend to not really associate it with that creativity, but I think it is. I think when it comes down to it, there's a creative way of thinking about that stuff. Yeah, totally. I mean, so many things are coming to mind as you're talking. I mean, I think about this series that I participated in a year or so ago, you know, One Strange Rock, where it really, I mean, it was about how the planet, you know, how we think the planet was created, what, you know, kind of the intricacies, details of how the planet works and stuff. Wow. And yet it was presented in a way that's like, okay, that should be in every kid's classroom. You know, yeah. I mean, just the, the, just the presentation of it was so creatively done. To, it just made your brain want to know what was happening in all these places, these otherworldly places that exist on our own planet that you might not ever even think about. And then I have this little thing. I'm just going to show it to you. So this is my little thing. I usually use it with kids. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, but it's a little astronaut. He's holding a sign and it says, yeah. why we can, not why we can't. Right. And, um, you know, that 
first of all, that's a motto from one of my um, mentors, one of my bosses at the Kennedy Space Center, Jay Honeycutt, who was the center director there for a while. And it was one of those people that was part of throwing, you know, dumping the trash can full of stuff on the table for yep. Apollo 13 to figure out how do we build this air filter. Yeah. And you're right. We don't we don't go to space or do really complex things unless we're thinking about how we can do it. Yeah, I think that's where the creative, like critical thinking mind comes in is you're not, you might be bound by what you have in that trash can or what we dumped on the table, but you're not bound by how you can put them together and use it and, and solve the problem. And, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, sci-fi becoming sci-fact. I mean, so much of what we look at yeah. now and what, you know, and what we use in space was inspired in some way by somebody who thought just imaginatively about what it would be like to live there. I mean, holy moly, the, you know, the place that's right down the road from you there in Orlando, um, you know, Disney World, Walt Disney was one of those critical thinkers that was involved with how do we get people to space? How do humans live there? How do we go to the moon? I mean, I don't think it would have happened without his participation and others like him. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I love that quote. I saw you, uh, I think it was the Yuri's Night um, ah. interview that you were doing where you mentioned that quote. And it's funny because I've, I've dealt with people like that throughout my career where they're just like, nope, can't happen, can't do it. And when I when I heard that quote, I'm like, that is the quote. That is the quote. Because everyone just wants to be like, well, it can't be done. We can't do it. And it's like, I've never been that way. It always, it's actually one of the things that really frustrate me about people who just see very linear is is nope, can't be done. It's like, yeah, it can be. Yeah. I mean, think about everything that's like, I mean, they must have said that about the light bulb and and electricity. Yeah. And it's like can't be done, can't do that. And it's if we had that attitude about everything, we wouldn't even have cars. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's pretty wild, but I, I love that quote. I actually, um, I wrote that down because I was, right when you said it, I like, I got to find that quote. I got to look it up. <laughs> so I, I wrote it down because I was like, I want that as a poster in my studio. Like, Yeah, I, I keep it everywhere. Every There's a bigger version of it back behind Unity there. So I always try to keep the little one here, you know, especially talking to kids and stuff. But it, you know, it totally applies to adulthood as well. I mean, in, in everything, you know, the guy... Yeah you know, the plumber or the lawyer or the realtor, you know, whatever that you're dealing with that, you know, it's just, it's just totally perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. And I think we covered yeah. this next question, but it's, it's uh, how important do you think creativity is to a career in science? Oh, I think it's really significant. I think that, um, you know, there's one place, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the NASA, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory out in California. And, you know, a lot of the missions that we think of like landing on Mars, you know, these really interesting spacecraft that are voyaging out into our solar system and stuff. Um, they have a team there that's called the studio, right? And it's a group of artists essentially that um, work hand in hand with the scientists to not only communicate the complex ideas that the science um, will yeah. produce, but are working hand in hand with them to figure out, you know, to think about how they should be thinking about solving the technical problem. And I mean, it's, it's, I think it's one of the most beautiful examples of how <clears throat> we do really complex things by yeah. actively, proactively integrating, uh, you know, the creative side as well. I mean, what's thought of more as like this artistic creative side yeah. and, um, and as far as engaging the public for them to understand the science, it's it's huge. Um, and I don't I don't think we do enough of that. I think NASA overall is starting to figure out that this is really important, especially yep. when you've got humans involved. You know, it's kind of that human in the human spaceflight thing again. We have to cr creatively we have to establish a relationship with people in order for them to um, think what you're doing is important and. Uh, yeah. I think I think that's one of the biggest deals about it is, you know, we can really creatively think about ways to um, find that relationship with the public and then lure lure them in if we have to, to yeah. understanding the value of the science that's going on. Well, I look yeah, at the space that. station, you know, the space station. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, you know, I'm a rambler, but no, no, it's, it's good. like, you know, there's that app where you can put on your phone. It's like spot the station or ISS tracker. You can put your zip code in or your country and city and find out when the space station is going to be flying overhead, right? Yep. You know, this beautiful dot of light moving from horizon to horizon. And, 
and I try to pull, you know, we do, my husband and son and I, you know, we'll be out in the front yard watching for it. And there'll be somebody walking down the street and we're like, oh, you got to see, did you see the space station? Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah. What's that? You know, like you crazy person. And, and then they look at it and then you know that they're going afterwards and looking it up themselves, right? Yep. And what's the first thing they see when they look up the space station? They see this gorgeous, like masterpiece that's like yep. hanging in space. I mean, almost like I get goosebumps thinking about how stunningly beautiful it is and just kind of looking like it's still hanging there. And I don't know that there was any purposeful intent to make it pretty too, yeah. you know, but it is. It, and it, yeah. it it can pull, I and then you have the backdrop of earth behind it. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I want to, I want to know more about that. <laughs> yeah. And that that's, we, uh, we do that with our kids whenever, you know, we, we look up the the rocket launches and my yeah. two-year-old's like, rocket launch today? Rocket yeah. five minutes? Because he's always like five minutes. He's obsessed <laughs> the five minute with window, rocket. Yeah. yeah, he's like, rocket launch today? Rocket launch today? And and if it gets scrubbed, it's like the the worst. Like, he's just like so obsessed with it. He he loves it. But uh, I think the rambling part is, is uh, I, so I've had to make, I do that too. I think that's the creative the creativity in us, but uh, I've had to make it a point when doing these interviews not to talk over people. So I just- Oh, I just like, did oh, it to you though. Yeah. I have to listen. I have to listen. No. To you know what you can do? You can do the little hand signal. Okay, okay shut up, wrap it. Yeah, do, it let's, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. I won't cry in front of you if you tell me to shut up. Yeah, no, I would, ne I would never do that to anyone. <laughs> um, not on here at least. Uh, yeah. So yeah. as a kid, were you interested in art or science first? Wow, I don't know. I think- I think a little bit of both, you know, I'm really thankful my, my parents, you know, thinking back on it, you know, everybody's like, Oh, what inspired you to do this? That kind of thing. I'm like, you know, I think it just was this, you know, having parents that just shared what they loved with me, you know, um, my dad built and flew small airplanes. So we were hanging out at the airport all the time. And that's a technical thing to do, but Oh my gosh, when you watch somebody build one, that, that is a creative you know, masterpiece in the works too. The fact that you could then strap into it and go fly. That's, that's pretty cool. And, you know, and all of amazing. our, <laughs> you know, a lot of that was going on in our garage at home too. So, you know, my mom's washer and dryer was always covered with whatever colors of paint my dad had been spraying on the, you know, the parts that day, our bikes, you know, were always kind of psychedelic because of that. Um, but then my mom, you know, she she's a nurse by training, but she very creative. I mean, she made all of our clothes growing up. Can you imagine? I can barely even get to the store to buy my son's underwear and stuff, you know, let alone think about making everything. Oh. And, um, you know, I grew up in the 70s. So it was like macrame and um, hooked rugs and pottery and stuff. And she was doing that. So we did, you know, she just did it with us. And I just I don't know, between wanting to know how things fly and, you know, wanting to do ballet and craft and build things, I think, I think it was kind of a blend, which, which I feel very fortunate to have had happen, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. So you did, you did ballet as well? Dance? I did. Yeah. I, you know, I did ballet all the way through high school and I don't know why I stopped. I wish to this day that I would have continued that, you know, from both from the exercise, kind of the strength standpoint of it, but just there was, it's like painting, I think. It's almost like meditating. There's kind of this liberating, transcendent feel to it that um, that would have been nice. It would have been good for me to keep doing It would have been <laughs> a little bit easier in space to do the spins maybe, like just I kind did of do it in space. I don't know, I did, I, so I did. Cool. yeah. But, if, but I was up, uh, my first flight, I was there across Halloween. And so we all scavenged up these, like stuff from the station to make costumes out of. And we did uh, like a contest with our folks on the ground and, you know, things like that. But I found this, I don't think I have a picture of it here, but I found this thermal cover, this beautiful copper colored fabric thermal cover from one of the cargo vehicles that docked to the station. And it was something we had to replace or pull off inside before we could open the hatch to this vehicle, right? It wow. wrapped around and made this gorgeous, like flowing skirt wow. tutu thing, you know? And so I, I, yeah, I had some photos taken of ballet. <laughs> Kylie would be obsessed with that. Kylie would I'll just- send her, I'll send her break. a picture of that, yeah. She's, she's, the, she's our little ballerina painter, uh, you know, just yeah. totally, yeah. That's why I was like, oh, you, uh, 
I have to ask about the ballet yeah, because yeah. you know Kylie would be she'd be yeah. mad at me if I didn't ask that question. So yeah. very I think cool. That's interesting. You know, you look at people. There's this tendency, and you know, through the Space for Art Foundation work that we do, we do these exhibits. And I'll let you know we've got one coming up, hopefully at some point in the summer, to start at the Museum of Science and Industry in Tampa where you know we're going to have the space for art foundation work there but built around it is going to be artwork by people that you would normally just think of as technical right so astronauts and scientists and you know some folks from the local community and stuff and i i think there's just this misconception that you know technical people don't have creative i think it's more than not actually yeah. i think the majority and when i look at my colleagues in the astronaut office and i look at you know, our mission control team and our scientists and our engineers that train us. Um, most of those people have really cool art going yeah. on. And Janice Voss was an astronaut. You know, you talk about dancing. She did ballroom dancing. And so wow. she, on one of her first flights, she brought up this dress and did like, you know, spun through doing like some ballroom dancing in space and, you know, whatever that means, but just yeah. kind of to represent that, hey, you know, there's, there's a lot going on, I think, in the in all of us, really. And yeah. sometimes we just don't tap into it, and we probably should. <laughs> I think NASA has gotten better at that. I think mm -hmm. they, you know, if you look at the movies from like the 70s, and you know, it's very like you know, guys with glasses and pocket protectors, and That's the, what it was. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And and I think they, um, I think they've gotten better at telling the human story behind it, and their marketing has gotten better because I, I work, I do a lot of marketing, and I work with a lot of engineers on other like you know cameras or if you look at the stuff that. Nikon or Canon or Panasonic put out. It's very, you could tell an engineer helped develop this and, and they're good for instructional catalogs and, and yeah. directions. But when it comes to selling this, you have to sell the human, the, the whole story is the connection you make with that, that what you're selling, right? Yeah. And I think NASA has gotten a lot better at that. Uh, coming out with costumes for kids, yeah. you know, like NASA uh, official gear, stuff like that. I mean, when I was a kid, it was only space food. You go to the science center and it's like, oh, space is freeze dried ice cream, which I still love eating to this day. Right. But as you get older, you realize that it's basically just that creamer, like coffee creamer smushed into a sandwich form. Right. Yeah. So um, water sucked out of it. Yeah, exactly. So um, but it, it, you know, one of the first things we bought my son was a NASA official like costume. And it was like, here, this is and he's just he wears it with pride and that's when his imagination starts and the backyard turns into Mars and yep. he's making rockets out of, out of cardboard boxes. And, um, and NASA's gotten a lot better at that. And I think the engineers, I, you know, going back to you saying that engineers are creative, I think they are. And I think some of them struggle with, maybe they're not good at sketching or maybe they're not good at painting, but when you team up with an engineer, that's really good at what they do, it helps my job as a marketer and a creative yep. Because I can, if I understand it, I know that the public's going to understand. And if we can connect those stories that they don't even see, I can't tell you how many times I've interviewed uh, uh, non-creatives or, or engineers and they just go, I don't really do anything cool. Like, <laughs> what do you mean you don't do anything cool? <laughs> well, you know, I'm just, I'm just putting this on this. And it's like, that's amazing. That mm -hmm. is really cool stuff. And they just don't. They don't get it. It doesn't click to them at first. And then when you show them, they're like, oh, OK, I do something better than that. So they always tend to put it down. But um, how has being a creative helped you connect with more people and expose them to science and technology? Wow. Well, that I mean, honestly, that's been my whole I, I think I was doing it throughout my career as well, you know, or at least trying uh, in one way or another. But when I, when I retired from NASA, uh, which was a difficult decision to make, you know, okay, I'm going to take myself out of the line of flying in space again, or, you know, doing this other cool stuff that, you know, astronauts get to do when, you know, 99.9% .9 of your time is not flying in space, right? But um, I had done that, that painting in space on my first flight. I flew another flight afterwards, that, that final flight of Discovery, and we were trying as part of part of those missions to really communicate kind of the history of the space shuttle, how amazing it was, and, you know, to get people thinking about the future of, of spaceflight as well. And um, 
I was at a point where I was starting to think, okay, what do we, how can I uniquely, you know, share this really awesome experience that, you know, I was blessed to have. And I kept coming back to that painting in space. And I kept thinking, oh my gosh, you know, as we start to communicate these stories more with people, we have to do it creatively. We have to engage with audiences that don't already love NASA. I mean, mm -hmm. we do a really great job talking to the people that already love it. We've got to get the people that don't know anything about it. Yep. And to me, that's where the art, the art comes in. And the same thing is true when we work with these kids, you know, some of them don't, you know, I mean, they're in places that you don't ever want your kid to be, you know, in a refugee camp or in a pediatric cancer center somewhere. They're, they're in those places. You don't, you want them to be thinking about their future, transcending that experience through, you know, the inspiration of space exploration, but creatively thinking about it through art. And I think the same is true for all other audiences that might not be aware. And like I said earlier, you know, it's not about whether they like my art or not. It's about the backstory that I can engage them with. Yeah. And uh, I mean, every every day I'm thinking about, OK, if I'm going to paint this picture of this beautiful, um, you know, area of salt lakes in Australia, how can I do that in a way, first of all, that might look a little bit like it? Because yeah. <laughs> everything's experimental for me. But, you know, my interpretation of it you know, what am I thinking about in terms of when I saw that through the window, what I was doing in space at the time that somebody else might find interesting, and then just really getting them psyched about the fact that all of that work is meant to improve life here on earth in one way or another. And I just think art does a great job at that. You know, it lets it us really, have the freedom to talk to anyone. It really does yeah. because, um, I never really had like I, I was I've always been an artist. It's 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 been my even in science class, I was doodling and drawing and I have to be drawing in order for my mind to even open up and yep. uh, and and absorb anything else that I'm not. in. Um, but uh, so my my kind of intro into this was uh, Yuri's night one year, an artist in Paris had hired my company to go photograph his artwork at the Kennedy Space Center. And I was like, artwork at the Kennedy Space Center. So I go in and I'm just there to photograph his artwork in front of Atlantis, right? And I was like, there's artwork here. There's people dancing, yeah, there's, yeah. there's creativity, there's art <laughs> everywhere, yeah. right? So I was like, this is my, this is the first time I've connected with engineers it, like at that level where it's like, you guys are into art too? Whoa, like here we are, you know yeah, what I mean? I think that's so, where we met, those big, beautiful, was, large yep. format, yeah. 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 So I, I, you know, I went down and I, and I talked to Ryan and I was like, listen, I'm, I'm in Orlando. I would love to photograph this next year. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. I just want to make sure my kids can come because I want them to see the connection between art and science. Because if not, I would, I would have nothing to talk about. I know nothing. I was photographing in, in front of a, a heavy lift engine. Yeah. I didn't even know what it was until I read the plaque. I wasn't like, oh, that over there. But people were walking up that are like, here's this, this cooling system. And yeah. that's their world. And I could look at them and go, well, if you photograph it from this angle, it's a really it cool background. Really good. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I didn't think of that. And, and it's this way, Yuri's Night to me is just this way for creatives and engineers to just mix and be on a common ground where it's like we are under this masterpiece yeah. of of human achievement and uh it's it's one of the things that have never gotten old to me walking out and seeing atlantis just the way it's artistically placed and you know that just even the pose of that uh shuttle was a mix between creatives going, we want it like this and engineers going, you can't have it like that, but you could do it like this, right? Like, yeah, it's really good. It's, it is, and the, the, the um, reveal of it too, the way yeah. it's revealed to you through the whole presentation. And I would say, you know, um, I am really thankful, like, like, you know, events like Yuri's Night, there's an event that goes on that's called Starmus, that's about, you know, sp you know science and art, technology and art. Um, there's an event out in Tucson that you absolutely should go to. I'm not, I, I'm hopeful they'll be able to do it this year. I'm not sure it's called Space Fest. And, you know, some of, if not the best art, you know, space artists come together as part of this, not to mention the Apollo guys and, you know, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's really, really cool. 
you know, these are places that you should see that everyone I think should see and experience yeah. and see this just, you know, merging this integration of, you know, so beautifully of science and art. And yeah, I mean, that, that, you know, Atlantis on display, I look at it every time and I'm like, oh my gosh, is that real? Yeah. You know, how do we do that? You know, yep. you know, the doors are open. It's like, it's, you know, it's in its position, like it is in space when it's flying around the earth. And um, I, I don't know, it just presents it to you in this way that, I mean, you, and it does it, I don't know if you tried, but no matter where you go and no matter how long your arm is, you're like this far away from touching it. It's, if, you, yeah. if you reach over, you can like, yeah. like just I've never done that. almost get through it. You know? <laughs> uh, I've never done yeah. that. What you're talking no, about. I've never done that, have you? But the the thing that's so super cool about this though, too, when you go, you know, when you visit the the Kennedy Space Center visitor complex, I would say the same for Johnson Space Center, you know, for Marshall, all of them, even when there's not a special event going on, it's it's, it's a beautifully curated like art yeah. exhibit to me yeah. you know there is definitely the science being presented but it's just done in this way that just sucks you in you want to know what that engine is that you looked at right yeah. yeah yeah i thought the most beautiful part is the um where you go in and they have the pieces from from the shuttles that that we lost yeah. and that is just breathtaking i mean it you know and i've been like not to compare anything but i've, I've been to memorials before and this you just walk in and the way it's lit and it looks yeah. like there's nothing. I mean, I spent after kind of, you know, realizing what it is, I spent like, how are they doing? How did they display this to where I, yeah. it looks like it's floating there in space? Yeah. It's so good. And and then walking through and, and getting to know each astronaut and they've got their their personal belongings there. It's just, it's so captivating and they did a really good job at it. Yeah. I, I honestly, when people come to Orlando, they're like, should we go to Disney? Should we go here? And I'm like, you should go to the Kennedy space center and see that. I know it's a yeah. little bit of a drive. It's not as close as the billboards make it sound, but it's worth it. It's it should be the first thing on the list. You yeah. see, the, see the reality and then go, go. And I really, I, I like to think about this it this way. It's like, go to the Kennedy space center, see the reality of what we've, you know, challenged ourselves to do and done as human beings and what we're looking forward to in the future. Now go to Disney World and get your mind thinking about kind of the fantasy yeah. of it, of, you know, that hopefully one day can become sci fact as well, right? And oh my gosh, it's just, um, yeah, I get goosebumps. That memorial that's at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex for, um, Challenger and the Columbia Cruise yep. is one of the most thoughtfully yeah. curated spaces that I've ever been to. And I think it's because of both components that are there, right? It's not just about the crew members. And this is really, really um, significant from the standpoint of where you are when you're at this memorial. You're at the Kennedy Space Center. You're at the place that the people that are there that work there, I mean, it's a passion for them. They, they believe that the care and feeding of those spacecraft, you know, for the safety of those crew is their responsibility. I mean, it is yeah. in them, you know, when they're working there. And so I just love that it's a presentation of the human side of it, you know, the, of the astronauts that we lost in these, in these accidents, but then you travel back to this space that you described where there are these two very, you know, very thoughtfully again, curated pieces from the vehicles that were recovered. Yeah. And it's a reminder that, you know, there were, it's not just the crews that are involved, but there's the people on the ground here that um, are like intimately related to this whole thing and how it happened and what went down. And yeah, I mean, that's what I see when I look at those, those pieces of hardware, it's more than just like a piece of metal and foam and you know, that's in yep. there. It's, it's, it's just this beautiful representation of the story of the people and the, you know, the experience really. Yeah. It's, it's literally yeah. breathtaking and, yeah. and uh, yeah. Wow. Um, so these are two questions that I ask everyone. Okay. Um, what do you dislike the most about being a creative? <laughs> Not having enough time to create, right? To um, oh, I know, yeah. 
And I feel like, you know, I thought in this time of isolation and um, that there, that all of a sudden there would be this namaste opening up of, of free time. It, ha it hasn't been that. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not channeling in some other way creatively. I mean, like this conversation is really, I think, healthy for me, yeah. for me too. And, um, but time to do, and maybe this sounds selfish, but to do like my art. Yeah. You know what I mean? To just really have my brain, my thoughts involved in a piece that I'm creating. Yep. That's frustrating to me. <laughs> and I think I think everyone thought that the the you know I was like oh this will give me time to sketch and draw and um, it, it the the self isolation or the quarantine thing wasn't really it's not very good for creativity I mean honestly it's like I'm I started sketching and I was like I should be doing something else <laughs> I mean I feel like this is what I need to be doing and sometimes yeah. that that is enough but it it definitely there was a lot more other struggles involved with quarantine than I thought were going to be involved. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We could have a whole nother conversation about that, but I will say the one, the one, and this for, for us um, wraps up on Friday. Uh, you know, my son, this, you know, with your kids, you know, the school, the school at home thing, yep. God bless our teachers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, I have enjoyed it. I'll tell you, I've enjoyed it. My, and, and in fact, I think academically, my son is, um, is yeah. thriving in, in this kind of environment with it. But he also needs needs the people. I think our kids need that beyond the electronic interaction. They need the, yeah. the people. But, you know, my, my other creative thing during this has been, I'm working on a book. So, you know, that's where I thought, oh, all this time will open up for me to write. Yeah. And, and it hasn't. But I do, you know, if I'm doing anything myself, that's that's what I'm trying to work on. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, they, they, um, Kids, I mean, to me, education is everything, regardless of science or whatever. It's, it's all about education. I think most of the problems yeah. we have in this in the world and even this country come down to education. Yep. So it's it's uh, it's definitely eye opening, and I know it's it's always like. Yeah. My last question is: What do you love the most about being a creative? Oh, I th I think there's just this freedom about it, right? To really just be, you know, continue to be curious about things, you know, to, um, to try to, I don't know, understand yourself better, like by connecting through, through your own artwork with what, with what you're trying to interpret or share. Um, I think that's the, I think that's the, the best thing to me is it's, it really is kind of open-ended for me. It's always been experimental anyway. You know, I don't have any formal training as an artist, but I love like playing around with the materials and, you know, somebody might slap my hand if I knew I was using this paint that's meant to be used on glass, but I'm using it on glossy photo paper or something. Yeah. I don't know. And, you know, I always hope that my work survives because maybe it won't if I wasn't using yeah, the yeah, material yeah. properly. Right. But, you know, just that, I don't know. I, I think it's just the creativity of being creative is what really, um, what really is my favorite thing and, and, and do it and doing art with other people too. I mean, I have had, you know, just, I think even spiritually so much enjoyment from working with kids while they're do, creating their artwork, that's going to become part of something that's bigger than just their single piece and how they understand that in a, I don't know, a grander scheme of, I don't know, being part of something bigger. Right. Um, yeah. I think it applies to so many other things in life and yeah, I don't know. And just meeting people like you, you know, who are, yeah. are excited about, um, you know, just sharing what's around us in the world in a new way. It's, yeah. Uh, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's for me, it's the storytelling. It's definitely the, yeah. the, the ability to be able to connect with people Yeah, and, and then help other people by telling their story in a creative way way that resonates with um okay so now that's my answer <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry that's, that's no, basically really, what it you just it doesn't it underlies yeah. all of it yeah yep. that's yeah. basically what you just said i mean you yeah. like i look at like your painting that you did in space isn't just to me it's not it's you know it's it's not just a painting it's it's a way that you could tell your story and your experience in space so it doesn't matter what you painted it matters yeah. that you did it and that um you come back to earth and you meet with children and you say 
I created this in space and they go, wait, I like painting the, you know, and I know there's yeah. more to, there's definitely more to becoming oh, an astronaut than being good at painting, but <laughs> um, the, it, it's just a way to connect with them. And um, to me, it's, this is what, this is what I, you know, part of the reason why I, I wanted to interview you was I, I remember the first time I met you at Yuri's night, which was, wow, I get, I'm meeting an astronaut. Yeah. Super cool. You had like a, Christmas lights around your neck or something, <laughs> right? And I was like, this is cool. All right, you know, nice. I'll follow you on Instagram. It was cool. And then I met you at the Constellation event, um, which celebrated the 50 year anniversary of Earthrise, mm -hmm. right? So, and then you met my daughter and that is when I was like, wow. And and I I was just the way that you connected with her and all of your attention, I mean, there's people around you and everyone wants to say hi. And your attention went a hundred percent to her. And she was hasn't stopped talking about it since, Aww. right? Just the experience to her has become this like um like it just again, it it was amazing that you just took all of the focus in this loud atmosphere of music and people getting your trying to get your attention, and it all went to her. You went down to her level, you spoke with her asked her the questions that you asked her, had a conversation with her, right? And as a father of a daughter, because we had one first and then, um, you know, we found out we were pregnant again and I was like, man, I hope it's another boy only because like, I don't want to be a hypocrite and, and <laughs> I want to, you know, I know how I'm going to be as a dad. I'm going to want to protect yeah. her and everything. And as a dad of a daughter, it, it meant a lot to me because she saw someone that looks like her in this position and, and has accomplished all this stuff. So it's definitely, and she's just connected right away. I mean, we do her Lego kit. We, I, I buy them Lego kits every year for Christmas. Yeah. And her Lego kit was um, the women of NASA. They came out with a limited edition yeah. and we, and we, and we built them and I read her the story of each uh, engineer and astronaut that was in there. And it's, it's become our thing, even though she's also our little artist. Yeah. Right. She's our little ballerina and our little creative. So um, anyway, it's it, uh, when she got that package from you, she was just like, <laughs> she was like, who sent me this? No way. <laughs> so, I mean, it's definitely a, a memory that she loves. But um, I as a as a father, I, I just want to thank you for for being that way and genuinely sincere with the children, because um I could never do that as a father. Like I could never show her how strong, uh, like you know, how strong you can be and brave, uh, like you could. You know what I mean? Well, you did though. I mean, just by by recognizing that first, you know, Yuri's night that you needed to bring your kids there. I mean, that's that's huge. I mean, that, that is one of my favorite things about any of of these kind of events. You know, where we kind of set in our minds that oh, this is just an adult thing. This wouldn't be something that, you know, kids, and they are the ones, I mean, honestly, they are the ones that take away so much from, yeah. from those kinds of experiences. And I think it's important because it is, it's bringing together this, the science and art of it, but it's putting people in front of them that they can look at as, I don't know that, you know, as like representation for them. I mean, I really feel like, I mean, I feel like it's, you know, my part of my role is to be present for young girls to, yeah to show them. I mean, I almost self-doubted my myself right out of even just picking up the pen to fill out the application to, you know, to do not just to be an astronaut, but for other things in my life too. And so thankful for the encouragement that I received from other people to do that thing that I have total control of, right? Nobody else does this. You can do that for you. You yeah. might not get selected, but if you don't do this part <laughs> and you yeah. have total control over it and just, and young girls, I think, have a tendency to want to be perfect at something before they think they should be considered, right? So do I get to see her? She's she's hanging out on the side, like <laughs> watching. She's like, what's going on? Well, I'm so happy to have gotten to meet her too, you know, yeah. and- um, Come here. Yeah. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> she's, she's, like, she's like, yeah. You want to come in real quick here? Let me get you. Do you have any questions you want to ask? There you yeah. are. Say hi. Hi. How are you? 
You doing yeah. okay? Yeah. yeah. Do you like school from home or would you rather be at school at school? At school. Yeah, I get it. My son says the same thing. He doesn't want his mom to be his teacher. He wants his teacher to be his teacher. <laughs> yeah, and with your friends too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, have, do you have any art questions you want to ask? No? Bye. You don't want to ask what her favorite color is or... Do you know she was a ballerina in space? Oh. Yeah, I just found that out today. Yeah, yeah I she, got to do ballet in space. I'll send you a picture. I'll send you a picture with my ballet skirt that I made out of something that was on the space station. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to see that, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Nice Bye. to see you. <laughs> Bye. Do you have to go back to school? Yeah, be nice to you your mom. Go more school? Teaching you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're All trying right. very hard to be good teachers. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> she, she's embarrassed when she's in front of the camera. She's yeah. like, I'm always like, can I can I film you dancing? And she's like, no, no. Yeah. The no. pictures you've taken of her are so good. So good. She's you can see the strength in her. You really can. Yeah. She's got um, it going the on. First the first time I did a shoot with her was the Ray yeah, shoot. And really good. Um, it's funny because I, I didn't expect her to, you know, I, I'm used to directing people and giving them guidance. And I, I brought her out there. She helped pick out the costume and, and we painted the BB-8 and like yeah. everything. It, so I involved them in that. And uh, we go out to this construction site and I was like, all right, give me a smile. And she's like, no, Ray doesn't smile like that. And I was like, what? <laughs> Excuse yeah. me, and she Do you would not, not know the character, Dad. Yeah, she would not break character, and I, I was just like, I have to respect that. And uh, so she, she uh, always strong characters that she wants to to be and and do different things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's she's definitely the confidence thing is where I want to get her to to just you know be able to to uh, yeah. to take on things and just be like, I can do this because of this because I'm the right person for that. And uh, I love the commercial that you did for the Super oh. Bowl. I was like, that's Nicole, that's Nicole. It's, and Kylie, get in here, look. It was so funny. I was just like, this is amazing. Yeah, and then that's the creativity that we need. That's the, you know, is, is there room in space for women? It's like, who asked that? Apparently some people ask that, they right? They do, they do. And it was just so good to, to I love humor like that and I love, uh, that's the best way to kind of get, get those messages across is like, yeah. yeah, why are we still asking these questions? Why is this still a thing? But yeah, it's, it's funny. It's, I mean, the only time I would even think about like being the only woman on my crew or something would be when somebody asked me, well, what's it yeah. like to be, you know, the, and then, you know, I'd have to think about it. Like, well, yeah, I am. It's great. I mean, I, I don't, it would be nice to have other women on the crew. That was, that's true. But I didn't feel like I was, yeah, like losing something from it. But I'm so like that, that commercial, what I loved about it, you know, there are a couple things. One, it's like make space for women, make space for everyone. It's like, you know, it's yeah. not just this like women focus thing, but it's like, hey, this is part of the whole. And then, um, and then that they were really motivated to support young girls in, you know, in science and, and education yep. too, you know, with the Girls Who Code uh, uh, campaign that went along with it. Um, which yeah. is what I think what made it really was that that was the motivation. Well, I'm sure Ole had other motivations too, but I mean, it was like to, to have that be layered on top of it as part of the messaging is what I think made it so significant and was yeah. very um, successful for them too, you know, to do that. Yeah. And I am a hundred percent okay with uh, corporations advertising while benefiting uh, the greater good of, I of a totally bigger than them. Yeah, totally. I, th I think that's what we're, it's what we talked about for and, and in creative ways, like raises their awareness of, OK, so what impact am I having through the normal process of my business? Right. Yeah. That I might be able to temper in some way by, you know, taking action. Um, and how outside of that, if I'm, if I'm, you know, making a lot of money in this world, if I'm really financially benefiting, how do I then give back in other ways? And I think, I mean, I think that's part of what all of us want, want to be doing. Okay. How am I impacting yep. this world around me? How can I make that better? And what are my ways to serve or give to help, um, 
you know, share, yeah. share whatever I can with the others around me. And it's, it's awesome. I mean, I've talked to several people recently who, um, I mean, they share it much more eloquently than I do, but it's like, man, once you serve, you want to serve, right? Yeah. Once you start giving and sharing, you want to give and share. It's, it's a really cool, just simple way to think about it. And I yeah. think kids really get that. I mean, kids, once you start yes. getting them into stuff like that, they get it and they want to do I, those kinds of things. I think the connection for me was to, there was a point in my life where I, I, I thought that volunteering was basically like, or contributing to a nonprofit was, or a cause was giving money, right? Like, yeah. well, I can't get involved with that nonprofit because I don't have any money, right? And then it clicked for me when I, when I started Cannonball Kids Cancer with the founders, it clicked because I, what I was providing was art and creativity and storytelling, yeah. which has no value to, I mean, it's, it, it has a value, it's priceless, right? And, and to nonprofits, they, I realized that like, you know, the first t-shirt we did for Cannonball raised $70,000. Um, and I could never in a lifetime donate that amount of money to a yeah. nonprofit. Yeah. So, but for a 15 minute t-shirt design and setting it up on Teespring, I was able to raise this amount of money and have a bigger impact. And that's when it clicked to me. It was like, oh, donations and volunteering could be more than just financial or time. It could be my skills and talent that these nonprofits around the world are struggling for. Um, <clears throat> when I did the Weapon of Choice project, I, I do believe that the success of that project was one, me getting out of the way of the project, but also I gave it away for free to any nonprofit that wanted to use it. Right. And they did. And, and we have about 180 nonprofits around the world that have taken advantage of that because that proves the point that these nonprofits are struggling to get the story to people on how their issues, everyone. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, again, tying that back to NASA, I think that's what NASA has been better at recently is tying that human story back into NASA and saying, this is, I mean, look at their billboards. You, you see, yeah. look up, you know, look up and it's a kid with the rockets in, it, in, in their eyes. And it's like, that, that is good storytelling. Yeah. And that is what we need because a shuttle, a shuttle's great, but it's that bigger human connection. And then when they get there, the shuttle becomes the, the key yep. and then the people behind it. And um, I always had a different image of astronauts when I was a kid and then meeting them at these events, it's like, <laughs> I like, they're, you guys are just so personable. These and fleshy human being things. <laughs> I know, but I, I like, to me, it's always been like, you know, like some kind of top gun, like a, like, yeah. You what, know, do you mean? what do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Like just very dry. And it's <laughs> been the opposite. It's been, yeah. I mean, um, I forget. He, he was talking to my son about going to space and how like, you don't know you have to go pee. And like, I walked up and I was like, what are you guys talking about? And my son's like, we're talking about going to the bathroom in, yeah, space. Yeah, in space. And I was like, yes, <laughs> this is cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I stuff that my son was like, did you know, you don't know you have to go in space because of gra like no gravity. And I was like, I didn't, it's just amazing to <laughs> and me. True, and, yeah. and so anyway, it's, it's been a, uh, I mean, I had never been to the Kennedy space center before Yuri's night. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden it was like, um, I had clients contacting me to photograph astronauts for, you know, uh, for their campaigns and stuff yeah. in front of Atlantis. And I was like, I know how to light this. Yeah. I know it's not easy this. there. Yeah. It's not easy at all. But anyway, um, well, thank you so much You're for doing this. And, and thanks for chatting with Kylie. She's, she's going to be talking about this all, all week. I didn't even have to bring her to South Carolina. It would have been like, <laughs> this would have been enough. Oh, like, Anyway, yeah. so, thank you so yeah. much, and let's connect on projects and stuff too. And uh, definitely, I'd you know, love to. Um, I'd love to take your portrait. Like, I'd love oh, to I'd create love it. something yeah, creative good. that that I. Uh, I've always I have a list of of people that I I want to photograph and create portraits and tell their story somehow. But more than just like, you know, kind of implementing all the stuff that you do and in, into one photo and how do you capture that and, yeah. and kind of you know, but. Once this whole thing's over, this this uh, this thing's definitely put a little bit of a dent in my, I'm my sure, progress yeah. on things. But you know, it's allowed me it's allowed me to uh, connect with people like this who otherwise would have just been all over the place. And yeah. and uh, so I, again, it's it's that kind of creativity of that problem solving. But yeah. so good luck on your book. That sounds thanks. 
Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds scary, difficult. but fun. It is. Yeah. Both those words. Yeah. Yeah. 